So maybe when you saw this headline, New York Police Department impounds 80 unlicensed migrant mopeds from outside Roosevelt and Watson Hotel shelters, you thought to yourself, where are they getting the mopeds? Yeah, I did too. Let's get into it. Here we go. Let's watch a little video from Cash Jordan. This is the best explanation I could come up with. It kind of incorporated the whole thing from start to finish. Where do they get the scooters? How much do they cost? Are they renting them? And what are they doing with them? Cash Jordan, YouTuber. Give them a subscribe. There they are, the illegal mopeds in front of the Roosevelt Hotel. This right here is the Asylum Processing Center in New York City. And are these here by accident or is there a connection? Outside the Roosevelt Hotel, you'll find dozens of scooters parked. Without papers or permits to work, many migrants rely on food delivery jobs to help feed their families. They are everywhere, and I am so terrifying. Police impound illegal mopeds on West 71st and Broadway. This has been At going the Starbucks on. and McDonald's corner, it's like a big issue. Most migrants are not legally working right now because of how cumbersome the asylum process is. We're up to 160,000 now in New York City. What's up, man? There's a lot of people riding these things illegally, right? Yeah. Is that because they don't have a plate? Is that how it works? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm He's doing my story plate. on today. Oh, you don't He's have a plate, plate either? Fake plate. That's how it's done. Yeah, there's definitely a connection. And once you learn what it is, you're going to have a whole lot of questions. Do you know how long these mopeds have been here? I think from this year's open. Ever since it opened? Did they show up like right after it opened or did it take like a few days? I don't remember, but I know that it's so quick. Yeah? Okay. Thank you. It's no secret. Many migrants are working as food delivery workers. That's right. But because they're not legally authorized to work in the U.S. yet, they have to go through some extra hurdles to be able to do that. So these bikes in front of the hotel are being used by asylum seekers so that they can work. But why is it so many of them don't have license plates? And how do you get one if you just got here? How does that happen? How does it all work? Jesus and friend me are from Venezuela and arrived with their children two months ago. The two are renting out scooters from friends to deliver food. Friend me says, he pays about $300 a week to rent out a scooter. $300 a week. That's $1,200 a month. So that explains why the bikes are there. It's a business to rent one out to someone who doesn't change. have one. But how do you sign up as a delivery driver and get paid if you can't work? All these delivery things are app-based. You have to put in a valid social security number or it won't even let you sign up. There's an answer to that. But to understand why this is all happening in the first place, it's important to know that it takes about six months, according to Google, to get valid work authorization. And that might even be taking longer now since so many people are applying longer. all at once. They tell me they pay an additional $140 every two weeks to borrow a friend's Uber Eats food delivery account and be able to make a living. Again, there's no way to sign up with a company like Uber Eats or Grubhub or Seamless if you don't have valid work authorization from the federal government. You need a bank account, you need a valid ID and a valid SSN, all stuff that most people who just got here don't have and won't have for a long time. And this has essentially allowed an underground market where digital identities are rented to flourish right here in the middle of Manhattan, New York City. And this secret digital identity market, Rent it puts people identity. who need to access it in a tough spot because they're not the ones getting paid for the work they do. Somebody else is, not them. And a situation like that opens the door to po possible shenanigans. What I want to point out here is in Uber Eats, you're an independent contractor, right? You're not an employee. That's typically how they set that up. So who's paying the taxes? I'm going to go with nobody. Possible foul play, especially when you find out what the difference is between the purchase price of one of these and what they're being rented out for. This little e-bike company here, they're probably the most popular place to get yourself an electric motorcycle, an electric scooter, electric bike. Look at that right there. $11.99 comes in blue. 30 mile an hour top speed. So as it turns out, owning one is the same as renting one for a month because $1,200 is the rental fee, $11.99 purchase price. The people renting these things out, they're the ones making money because after one month, they 
broke even and now they're making profit. And this is probably why so many of the scooters parked in front of the hotel look like they're in relatively good shape, maybe even brand new. Now, obviously, none of this is the company's fault. And whether you're an asylum seeker or a native New Yorker, everyone needs access to a low-cost transportation method, and that's it. Look, this one right here, 1100 looks fantastic. And when you consider that the unreliable subway costs over $1,500 a year if you buy monthly passes, this is cheaper. And you're commuting on your own terms, not the MTAs. The father of three says when he's paid rent on the scooter and paid to borrow the Uber delivery account, he takes home about $500 a week. Now, if the gentleman in the video is making $500 a week, after a month, he'd be able to buy his own scooter, but he'd still be in a position where he needs to pay for access to somebody else's account in order to use it. So part of the system goes away, the scooter rental, but the other part, the digital identity component, that stays with him the entire time until he gets his own work authorization. And that makes it very difficult to climb an economic ladder if you're always kind of stuck. And the situation is far from ideal. His suit tells me one of his scooters was recently confiscated by police since it was not registered. That's what we're talking now, about according today. to the state of New York, these are all considered limited use motorcycles. And since all these bikes have a 30 mile an hour top speed, you have to register it. You need to have the headlight on at all times. You need to wear protective equipment. And look at that. You need insurance. Now, there's like nothing the illegal about owning one of these scooters. It's just that if you want to operate it on a public road, there's certain rules that you have to abide by. And that seems to be where there's a problem. And that's where the issue is. If you're riding one of these things and you injure somebody and you don't have any insurance, you both could be in a world of hurt financially because nothing is going to be covered. You might even get sued. But confiscating these is not easy. They weigh over 100 pounds. And if you're a police officer and you confiscate that one, there's two more on the other side of it. What are you going to do? Now you have to stand there holding on to it until some truck comes to tow it away. This is like 700 pounds of metal right here. Good luck. Having a plate on one of these makes it basically impossible to rent out. New York City's got red light cameras, stoplight cameras. If you do something on one of these bikes, and it's not yours, the owner is gonna face repercussions for that, possible speeding tickets, fines, prosecution if there's some sort of accident or something, God forbid. But that's likely the reason why an unregistered bike is the only one that you could rent out to somebody else. But that explains a lot, doesn't it? I mean, all right. So bottom line is, is you've got multiple layers of shenanigans going on here. So the police have every right. All right, none of these bikes are registered. We know that you're riding these all over the city, there's reports of people riding them down one-way streets the wrong way, people riding on the sidewalks, people doing just all kinds of crazy stuff. Because why shouldn't they? They don't have a license. They came in the country illegally. They're just doing whatever. They're, they're, you know, vast majority of these folks are hustling to try and make it go, right? But they're doing it illegally because they're being forced to. Because, you know, th there's a process that we have to go through immigration but these folks aren't and these these sanctuary cities are just bringing everybody in and and they're they're not preparing up front for this massive 160,000 people in New York City they're playing catch up so now we're getting rid of the scooters that these folks are using to illegally support themselves just so many layers of of craziness going on in these stories right let's read the article let's see what we got going on New York Police Department is cracking down on and and this this is there's a number of stories back in September that we had same exact thing. So this, this is not a new story, but it's an ongoing. It's one of those things. It's like New York City and the whole poop issue. We just released a video on that, and you guys just went crazy for that. Apparently, everybody loves a, a good poop story. Who doesn't love that, right? New York Police Department is cracking down on unlicensed mopeds being driven around New York City by illegal immigrants. Police Department posted on X Monday on Twitter, but it had confiscated 80 such vehicles that have been parked outside the Roosevelt and Watson hotels in Manhattan. If you're not familiar with Roosevelt and Watson hotels, those are the reticketing centers. So if you've gotten housing and you've been kicked out on either the 30 day or the 60 day, um, individuals at 30 days, families at 60 days, if you've been kicked out, then you go back and you stand in line until you get reticketed for more housing somewhere else. And you do that at these hotels. So people are literally either staying in the hotel or they're there because this is where the hub of the you know, illegal industry is because this is where all the illegal immigrants are. The two hotels have been converted into migrant shelters and are known to have lines of mopeds parked outside. New Yorkers have long complained about the illegal migrants using the mopeds to zip around the city. 
with many migrants flouting the rules of the road by driving the opposite way down streets, along sidewalks, and on bicycle lanes. All right, but here's the bottom line. If you're a New York citizen, you voted politicians in. You voted in Eric Adams, who said, we're a sanctuary city. We're going to welcome these people from the bottom of our hearts. We're going to take as many as we can in. He wasn't expecting Governor Greg Abbott of Texas to just go ham with buses. All right, you want them? I'm going to send them, send them, send them, send them. And he's literally sent hundreds of thousands of people via bus to these sanctuary cities. Sanctuary cities got to a point, they're like, oh, wait a minute, stop, hold on. We don't have the resources for all this. Maybe you should have thought of that before you virtue signaled, hey, we take as many as humanly possible. Now it's a humanitarian crisis. Yeah, <laughs> you've got Chicago saying, no more, we're not building any more shelter, first come, first serve. You've got Eric Adams saying, it's destroying the city. Many migrants use mopeds to make deliveries for food app companies since they cannot find other jobs without work permits. I don't blame the immigrants for doing what they got to do to scratch and do what, you know, to, to make a living. I don't blame them for coming into the country. I, I blame the whole notion of there's got to be a plan ahead of time. All right, you got to go through these steps. You can't come into the country illegally and then we'll figure it out. But that is literally what's happening with immigration right now. And it's particularly impacting these big blue cities because their constituents are going, hey, what about us taxpaying citizens? You can see in this storyline, all right, so are these scooters illegal? Where are we buying them? We're not registering them. I mean, and then borrowing somebody or renting somebody else's fake ID account. I, I mean, there's still so many more questions here, right, to this whole storyline. But you can kind of see the guts of, of what you got going on. None of it is legal, right? However, the vast majority seen outside the hotel shelters are unregistered with no license plates. Under New York law, all mopeds must be registered and insured, but unlicensed mopeds cannot be insured. Additionally, drivers are required to wear helmets. There's no helmets. There's no insurance. There's no nothing. We're just out there delivering stuff. One of the comments on the, the video we just watched was, yeah, I'm in New York City and I just got an Uber Eats order. And uh, it wasn't the guy that it said Uber Eats said was delivering to me. He spoke no English and it was a totally different restaurant than I had ordered from. Like, Oh, is this shocking? No. No, shenanigans like this, you're, you're guaranteed. And it's because there's, there's no plan for all of this. It's just fly by the seat of your pants. I liken it to you've got a company that knows they've got a cash burn of XYZ million. They get going and their owners say, yeah, we know that we don't have the money to, for this cash burn that it's going to take for us to get up and running, but we'll figure it out anyway. Well, we're at that figure it out anyway for many of these big blue Democrat cities that have said, bring us all the people you can that have come across the border illegally. Now they're at that, oh, the cash has run out. We've still got this enormous cash burn. What are we going to do? And that's what so many of my podcasts have been about recently, because the illegal immigration is such a hot topic. Number one topic going into the 2024 election, right? Let's keep reading. And if you're enjoying this content, love to have you subscribe, Hit that like notification bell, all that good stuff. We've teamed up with officers from New York Police Department, Motor Transportation, M Midtown South and Midtown North, uh, along with New York Sanitation, New York City Department of Sanitation and removed 80 vehicles helping to address the issue until they just returned, right? Because this isn't going away, is it? You're not magically handing out enough work permits. And even if you were, you're handing out work permits to people you haven't vetted. You have no idea who these folks are. You're just, ah, we'll just see how this works. Should be fine. The, um, who was it? The Office of Budget or something. They recognized that I think over 3 million encounters, known encounters, have have happened in the United States in 2023 alone. That report was just released. I mean, you've literally got millions of people pouring into the country and they got to support them some, some, somehow, whether it's through crime, whether it's through illegal hustles like this, or 
being an undocumented worker somewhere, somehow, before you get that work permit. And, you know, people got to live and they're only going to be able to live off the government, our government, our tax paying dollars for so long. The whole thing is just so backwards, but we knew it going into it. And it's been this way for years, but it's just, this is accelerating now. Because we're immigrants, we don't have many options. One migrant told Fox 5 after a similar sweep in September, one of the easiest options is to grab a motorcycle and apply on Uber. Well, if you can, or you just rent from somebody else, right? Because without a social security, without a, an ID, without insurance, I mean, I don't know if you've had anybody in your life you know, work for Uber. It's not exactly 100% easy to, to get on, but they're making it happen somewhere. And clearly, what was it? 140 bucks every two weeks. So two, another 280 bucks, something like that, on top of $1,200 scooter rental. And I guess, and then, and then you're still making 500 bucks a week. So man, that's a lot of deliveries to cover you all your rent and then make enough money. I question the 500. You're, you're, you're scooting around town day and night to make that work, I think, after paying all those expenses. However, New Yorkers say the bikes also spoil the neighborhood, with one Upper West Side resident describing them as a canker sore to Fox 5. Well, it's because they're unregulated and there's just a whole bunch of them. Some of the other questions I had is, how many people are getting in wrecks on these things? And no wonder they're not registered. You want to rent out your registered vehicle to you and take on the risk of lawsuit? Somebody you don't know rents your scooter, who no idea of you know what their background is, and they crash it into somebody else, and you get sued. You know somebody else. Hey, imagine standing up in court now. Who did you rent this out to? Well, um, not really sure. Did they have any ID? Not, not really. They had uh, they had an immigration go one go pass from the government. All right, all right. Well, see a little bit of liability there. Yeah, crazy. One Venezuelan migrant told the Daily Mail that he and other men living in the Roosevelt Hotel are making as much as fifteen hundred every two weeks by delivering food and other items. But 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 the people renting them their ID, they got to take a cut of that, right? You got a ticket. I guess it's the 140. How are they getting paid? How how are they getting, you know, are they just Venmoing each other? I mean, is this on the honor system? It, it's got to be because this the whole thing is just so flim flam. But these are the flim flam things that people have been, you know, doing to scrape by and get by until they become legit. If they become legit, if they can become legit, those are so many of the other questions. That you know, the rest of us tax paying citizens are sitting around going, How's this all going to work out in the end? Ah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Bring them on. We're a blue state. We're a blue city. It should be fine. Love our fellow human being. Yeah, but you got to have a plan. You got to have some order. And what I'm doing is just kind of showing there ain't no plan. There ain't no order. And this is what you get. Well, we, we hauled out 80 of 80 motorcycles. We hauled out 80 scooters. That's just a drop in the bucket, right? Many delivery apps require drivers to submit a license before being able to pick up deliveries. Yep, maybe somebody else submits their license. But the men told the publication that they get around that by using apps designated for bicycle deliveries. That's smart. When I read that, I'm like, that makes sense. All right, so you're using a scooter to do a bike delivery so you don't have to have a driver's license. All right, okay. Yep, we're filling in some more pieces here. It's a little bit of the piece. New York is currently housing around 69,000 illegal migrants with more than 160,000 migrants arriving into the city since the middle of 2022. And it's winter and they've got evictions going on. And this whole thing is just a house of cards that is not waiting to fall. It's in the process of falling. It's falling as we speak, right? I mean, how about February when you get some, just some of those brutal storms? You know what I'm talking about? Maybe March comes in like a whatever, comes in like a lion, goes out like a lamb. Well, I, maybe. Some of who have been bussed by Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Some, a lot of them have, or flown in. And he's taking planes and just chartering planes. And New York Governor Kathy Hochul pr proposed providing $2.4 billion of taxpayer money to New York City to handle the crisis. More money. Just spend more money. Yeah, spend, spend more money. 
Take more money from your constituents, their hard-earned tax-paying money. Just spend more money. Get some, get some of that free Fed money. Get some of that Obama money along with an Obama phone, right? New York City Mayor Eric Adams says the crisis will cost the Big Apple at least $12 billion by the end of fiscal year 2025. But you know what? That's what they wanted. They begged for it. They wanted it. And, and constituents of New York City, I'd feel bad for you. But you voted these folks in who made these decisions. Oh, yeah. Because you guys didn't vote on being a sanctuary city, did you? Uh Uh-uh. No. And you've got lots of different areas in blue blue territory that are going, you know what? I I think we're going to, I think we're going to rethink that whole sanctuary city thing. And then you've got Republican mayors going, "Uh, yeah, hard no. We're a hard no. We can barely take care of our own because budgets are down. Don't know if you know this, but we don't have the budget to do that. And that's the practical side of Republican run, whereas this humanitarian bleeding heart side just gets you in trouble because at the end of the day, you you can't control what's going on. And it just gets wacky to the point where you got to go around and round up scooters. And the scooters are the least of these problems, right? You've got people living out on the streets. You've got people committing crimes. You don't know who is there and you don't know who's, who's coming to the country. And I know America and I know New York City is based on immigration, but you got to have a plan and you got to have a way to enable that plan. And you need to know, you need to be able to vet who all these people are. And one of the big things that's being kicked around in Congress right now is the parole system. And that is meant to give people the ability to work before they get citizenship, before they you know work through all those processes. I don't know if you've seen the timeline on becoming a U.S. citizen. It's years and years and years. It can be up to like 10 years. And so what, what the government has done in, in past years along the lines of with people being persecuted by the Taliban, fly them here, mainly flew people in from Afghanistan. They come here. We parole them, meaning they don't have everything set up and ready to roll. But we're paroling them, basically letting them loose into the into the countryside. Yep, go out there, giving them a work permit and letting them do their thing. And then when their hearing comes up, and some of these hearings now are for their hearing comes up for citizenship, their first hearing sometimes is as far away as 2031. Think about that. These people aren't going to show up for these hearings. Hey, you got that notice for that hearing? And yeah, that was in 2024 and it's now 2030. It's six years ago. I've been uh, been through fourteen jobs, two wives, had four kids, been born, you know, two divorces. Um, no, I don't have that piece of paper from six years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> the whole thing is just—it's crazy what's going on. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to cover is the boots on the ground, um, and not necessarily my boots, Cash Jordan's boots in this in this video, but the the realities of what that means. When you bring 302,000 known illegals across the border in December alone, across the southern border in December alone, they got to go somewhere. This is what they end up doing. These are the things that end up happening. And if you're in a blue sanctuary city, then this is what you're going to be bogged down with. And you won't have the budget for all the other things you need. You're going to see tons of budgets across the country in these cities that are doing this. They're going to cut from they're going to cut from taxpayer public safety things, police officers. They're going to cut from whatever they need to to keep this going because they're committed up front to this. Unless you're like, let's go, Brandon Johnson. And he's like, yeah, I know we said that whole sanctuary city thing, but we got to turn our backs on you immigrants now because oh, the budgets run out. You're going to see a bunch of that because those are your two options. You either say to the illegal immigrants, no, nope, no more. We can't house any more of you. Or you beg the federal government for funds, or you cut the budget of your other tax to services to your other tax paying citizens to make it go. That's about all you can do. Or you just tax the heck out of your tax paying citizens. And I think that's a lot of what's going on. All right. So that's the update on the scooter story. Thanks for being here. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now. (laughs) 